G'day, Dylan from Byron Bay Observatory here. I had the distinct opportunity of being able to fly on NASA's SOFIA jet to take the highest resolution and most detailed image of the sun ever taken by an amateur astronomer, which you can see here, way better than anything you can do on Earth. I'm just joking, I took it on this little thing. I can't believe what a dinky little setup like this can do. It, this, there's almost nothing here. It's a Lunt 40 millimeter telescope, which is the smallest and cheapest version you can get. Not double stacked, base model, base blocking filter, B600. I have the QHY200M, an under $500 camera, which breaks the 500 rule. And the Skywatcher GTI mount, which is really not doing anything much except tracking an RA. You can do this with the old Star Adventure as well. I didn't use any of the go-to features or anything like that. I've got a question here from Philip Muller on Twitter saying, can you make a video showing the process from focusing to Processing. Is it double stack? No, it's not double stack. I just said that. Uh, but yeah, I can show you how it's done. My name is Dylan O'Donnell and you're watching Star Stuff. Look, it's the Australian summer. I have to take the lab coat off. I know your mum likes it, but it's hot, dude. harder to see but what I'm going to do is pull the gain right up so I can see all the edges and see all the activity on the limb there. It looks pretty in focus to me but now I'm going to pull the gain right down so I can see the surface and I'll get the disc closer to the middle of the camera chip and zoom in so I can see a sunspot and using a surface detail like that I will try to adjust focus on the telescope. So now I'm going to record 45 seconds of the full disc. Now I'm going to bump up the gain to get all of that out of detail again and reframe it into the middle and 45 seconds. Okay, let's process this data. So I didn't get a lot of data, I just went out there for less than a minute and a half. Uh, now I'm going to open up Auto Stack at 4 and I'll drag the first one on which is the overexposed disk here. We've got it set to planet stabilization because it's getting most of the frame there. I uh, will analyze. Uh, now with the quality graph I've set it so that it will reject uh, anything past the point where I put here. You see this green line which shows the quality going down. Uh, that presents the data sort of linear like that. So I just take the first 25% and then I set my frame percentage to stack to 50%. So it's actually stacking about 12.5%. So half of 25. I have Drizzle 1.5. I use the Sharpen Preview blended with RAW for 0%. It just gives me a Sharpen Preview. I'll do the actual sharpening in something like Registax or IMPG, that other one. Um, alignment points here, now I've tuned this, the alignment point size and the minimum brightness uh, so that when I place them they all go on the, the, the actual features around the disc here. Uh, so you might want to tune your particular um, alignment point size and minimum brightness so that this happens if you are using an overexposed disc like this. And then we stack the image. Okay, so the disc is stacked. We should have a preview in here. There we go. Uh, that's the sharpened version. We'll get a bit more dynamic range out of the non-sharpened version there. That's looking good, so let's do the other one. I'll just drag that onto the open button. And we have the surface. So here I'm going to switch to surface stabilization. 
I'm going to control click on a small sunspot. Uh, yeah, that one's good. Which will, it'll use that as the anchor for figuring out how to stabilize the image. And analyze. Okay, I'll drag the first 25%. 50% stack, alignment points, uh, yeah they look alright, and stack. Let's have a look at what that looks like, here's the sharpened version. It was at this moment that he knew, he fucked up. Okay, that didn't work. So what I did is I ran, I ran the SER file through PIPP processing to stabilize and center the planet, and then output, re-outputted that again as an SER so that it was a more stable uh, video with less drift. And then I restacked with the same parameters as before, but using this improved tracking and find anchor in um, auto stack at four, the new version. And that worked. So this is before and that's after. Same video file, same trash <laughs> data that I gave it. And it just cleaned it up beautifully, uh, which is great. I can work with that. Let's get our data together. Uh, I'm going to delete, delete the bad stuff. And we don't need this over sharpened one either. So we end up with two files, the disk and the surface detail. And they're what we're going to open up in Photoshop. Actually, before we go to Photoshop, we're going to run the secret source, which is this IMPPG file. This is fantastic software. Uh, let's open up one of those new sun images, the outer disk first. Now, this takes a lot of fiddling. I'm going to select all and we can, we can kind of play with this to see how much detail we can get out. Yesterday I saw a faint flare off here. Uh, that's not there anymore, so that's just flared out. Uh, but I, I like to make this pretty bright. I'm gonna pull the whole thing up so you can get that real shine, so it looks like it's shining. It's totally overexposed. Then I'm gonna play down here. Where is it down here? You can sort of keep putting points and play with different sections of it. You can see we're playing in the, uh, just the outer edges of it here. Let's see if I can pull out any more detail in these fringes. We can always reset and start again if we need to. We don't want it looking too unnatural as well, so I want every blend to look kind of normal. Yeah, that looks pretty good. So I'll keep that tone curve. And we do have sharpening applied as well, so we can adjust how much sharpening we have by pulling these sliders. I don't want the outside to be too sharp. I like the, the softness of it, but that looks about good. So I'll save that off now. Now we'll open our next one, which is the soft version of the surface and reset the tone curve, select the whole image. It's already applied the sharpening from before, same sharpening. Probably go sharper on the surface, pull it up. Yeah, that's pretty good. Just a touch more unsharp, yep. And here you can do some great things with the tone curve as well in terms of playing with the brightness and contrast of the thing. Um, I'll reset it, do an auto stretch, and I'll probably do most of this in Photoshop so I won't play around too much with this particular curve. You can see it pulls out the side detail there as well if you want, but I don't want to do that because we're going to use two layers to this image. So I'm just going to reset that. I can see traces of it anyway, maybe even pull it down a touch. And we can do all the rest of our contrasty stuff in Photoshop. So I'll save this off now that it's sharpened. Save that as disk. So now we've got a Corona file and a disk file. And they're the two that I'll open up in Photoshop. That, uh, that looks absolutely stunning. I'm going to just copy this whole layer. So Control A, Control C, Control V to dump it in. Uh, I'm just gonna change the opacity to make sure our layers are lined up. They look pretty well lined up through auto stack it anyway, which is good. What I'm gonna do is invert the middle layer. So control I inverts it, and then we'll go down to our blending and change it to multiply here, which already looks amazing, right? So invert, multiply. All it really needs is color and contrast at this point. So I'm going to go layer, new adjustment layer. Ah, it's not, uh, 
sorry, before that you've got to convert it to RGB, don't flatten. So image mode RGB, and then layer, new adjustment layer, hue saturation. This is all artificial colour because um, the sun is a white body. This is purely artistic. I like to give it a bit of ready, ready orange. So when I'm selecting the orange, I don't go too yellow because it looks kind of weird. I don't go too red because that looks sort of un unnatural to our human puny brains. So I give it some deep saturation and about there is pretty good. Um, not a lot of contrast though, so I'm going to go layer, new adjustment layer, levels, and I'm going to throw those levels in between the colour and the top two layers, and I'll just add, add a bit there. I'll pull in the sliders from both sides. Now the, the white end will give it this real punch, uh, which is great. And that's a very dramatic photo. You could also adjust the levels directly destructively if you want on the disc itself uh, to add more contrast in there. I wouldn't go too crazy um, but that can help and you can see that there is definitely a bias and I think that might be camera tilt but I'm not sure. Um, it's just, just a characteristic of this particular setup. I'm going to crop in like this to see less of that vignetting on the sides and I'm going to rotate back to what it was yesterday which is I think 90, yeah, about that. Uh, that's sort of good. From here I'll just tweak and play with the image a bit. But that's essentially done and that's how I've uh, achieved this particular result. I don't like the vignetting on the side here, so maybe I'll play with that. Bring the level up on the edge. If you wanted to, you could also colorize the uh, corona layer as well separately. Uh, so you get blue and orange, that's something that people do as well. Uh, but yeah, pretty easy solar processing, there's not much in it, it's so quick, like it's just something I can do literally in my lunch break from work, get up from the desk, go outside, <laughs> set up a scope, take a few minutes of video, process the image quickly, just see what it's like, see what's going on on the sun. Uh, a lot of this is the remnants from a huge flare that happened on the sun a few days ago, and uh, we saw the, the last the last little bit of it yesterday as well, but um, really fantastic year for looking at the sun, the solar maximum 2023-2024. Enjoy it while it lasts. I hope you enjoyed that video, super quick processing one, not much in it this time, but I'll be back with more for you and your astronomy journey. My name is Dylan O'Donnell, and you've been watching Star Stuff, and remember, everything is meaningless, and we're going to die.